So the first practice I want to present in this second part is the practice of meditation and mindfulness. And I want to explain why it's such an essential part of good leadership. But basically about 3,000 years ago, small groups of people made a, a, a quite an astonishing discovery because they discovered that if they practiced paying attention, listening, noticing in a very deliberate, intentional way, their whole state began to change, their whole state of consciousness, their whole perception of reality began to change. And this became the foundation of what we now know as meditation and mindfulness which has become very widespread in recent years. It's very common in schools, in hospitals, in prisons, and of course, in many organizations. A colleague of mine returned from the Far East recently working in a very large organization and the chief executive took her into the main atrium and there was a big sign there and one sign posted to the conference room the other sign posted to the meditation room. This is the future, no doubt at all. But why is meditation and mindfulness so important? So one thing for sure we can say about the leader as healer is that he or she has broken the habit of the rational mind being the dominant modality. He or she has practice locating themselves in a deeper part of their being, within which we have an extraordinary thinking capacity, we have a very, very rich emotional capacity, and we have an extraordinary physical sensing capacity. And meditation and mindfulness are one of the key ways we can relocate ourselves. The Jewish mystical tradition gives us a very simple metaphor that I believe really supports what I've just been saying. They say that if you open the page of a book, you see black letters, page after page. But they also remind us that there is a white page. Once we really understand that, we understand that we've got fixated on seeing only the black letters. That's our reality, the black letters but there is a white page. Anyone who's creative, anyone who is in innovative practice knows that the best ideas come to us. They come to us and they come to us when the white page is open. So meditation and mindfulness, although they are widely used as stress reduction, <clears throat> that's certainly very valid. I believe they have a much deeper purpose. They enable us to access levels of our consciousness that every culture has always written about. Levels of receptivity, levels of inner silence, levels that make the game board much, much bigger. Neuroscience recently has been really looking into this and gives us a very helpful correlation Neuroscience shows us that as soon as we begin to intentionally practice attention, our brainwave frequency changes if we're wired up and we're in so-called normal brainwave function, which is called beta wave function. On a computer monitor, it has no shape, it's random, ragged. But the moment we shift into locating ourselves more in the white page, we enter a brainwave frequency, which of course has a numerical range that's called alpha wave function. And on the computer monitor, it looks much more like this. This is also the brainwave function that athletes go into when they're in what's called the zone. Ultimately, the practice of meditation, as many, many of the leaders I've worked with find out, first of all, enables us to get much more done, much more quickly, much more efficiently, and with much less effort. That sounds astonishing, but it is exactly what happens. 
And then as the practice deepens, it gives us this deeper resource, this level of inner silence, inner stillness, inner ability to really look at what's happening around us and to respond rather than react. This is the power of meditation and mindfulness. And the simple, most essential practice is paying attention, even if for a moment we would do this now, that we just take our attention, we notice our breathing. We notice the physical sensations of our breathing. We notice more and more precisely everything that happens as we breathe in and as we breathe out, which is constantly changing. And we learn to practice that kind of attention. We learn to practice that attention throughout the day till we gradually stabilize, stabilize ourselves in the level of being from which arises all our doing. And once leaders become adept at that, their world, their efficiency, their impact transforms.